Yeah, um... Um, 50 years time, well, I wonder what the world will be in 50 years. Ah. In a hundred years from now, um... Um... Wow, that's, that's a big question. Where do we, where do I think? Hmm. Well, um... I was afraid of that question. If you look at progress in general in the last hundred years, I think it's been strong and ugly. We have more, so we've progressed. But as Confucius would say, more than enough is too much. The big issues of today are environmental or social. Poverty, access to clean water, health, education. We're fundamentally changing the chemical makeup of, of, of the Earth. Everything that's happening now, we brought this upon us. We created it. The decision makers are really not acting in what is in the best interest of the public. The most likely outcome is that there will be some terrible tragedies and then, and then we will see radical change. These problems are not simple. There's not simple silver bullet solutions. We certainly have information that's valuable and we can use to avoid making the same mistakes again. I think the question is, will we face it? Will we take the short-term view? Your brain is most definitely not programmed for long-term thinking. It really operates most effectively in the here and now. You and I are fundamentally not different from hunter-gatherers. We still have basically the same brain, the same neural connections, and so we have this extraordinary situation that there is this mismatch between our natural evolutionary time scale and the time scale of socioeconomic evolution. If you demand open-ended growth, exponential growth, that means you have to innovate faster and faster and you can't keep up with it, and that system, I believe, is doomed to collapse. We're kind of at the point of no return of trying to deal with some of our problems in a linear way. We need nonlinear change, and nonlinear change only happens when you get sort of a wildfire of support from the people. We know the solutions are out there. The question now is, how do we connect them? We know what we need to do, but we seem to lack the will to do it. We do need to bring all these minds together, and we need to recognize all of these problems are interconnected. I see the world as networks. Everything from the way mitochondria within cells work and cells within bodies work, organisms work, cities work, they are networks. And the internet itself is a network. And in that sense, it's almost spiritual. You see this great unity of life. It's kind of amazing, actually. We are quickly becoming a global neural network. The power of a correct idea in this interconnected age spreads so quickly that scale can happen on a never-before pace. Once you get to the point where just anybody in any community has a, is empowered to learn, design, create, and participate, it'll allow everybody to feel a sense of both ownership and responsibility to each other and to the rest of the world. A world where we've moved from presentation to participation, where billions more voices have entered the conversation. There's so many entities um, deploying resources to solving the world's most significant challenges. Often, they're working in silos, not collaborating, not realizing that they may be tackling some of the same problems. Now, a problem can be considered, thought about, crowdsourced and shared by not just the people who have already thought about a problem, but people who have never thought about the problem people who may provide, when they think about the problem, a breakthrough insight. Once in a while, I also do think about energy, and I think, yeah, we should use, for example, solar energy instead of oil. Taking oil, which is actually quite quite precious, and, and burning it is like using, it's like using the, the furniture in your house as firewood. If you look at how people charge cell phones in Africa, all of those ways that they figure out to charge those cell phones, nobody in America would ever have figured them out. Frugal engineering happens in the absence of abundance. Living in a frugal society doesn't mean you're disadvantaged. It means you're advantaged in thinking from the perspective of efficiency. We saw a loan from Nairobi, Kenya 
go to someone in Oakland, California. Really changing which way people are helping people. So long we've conceived of the North helping the South, but it's so wonderful to see the reverse. This kind of arrogance that just because we have more money that we're smarter has given us this kind of blindness to the fact that we really don't understand these communities we're trying to help. It's because we're trying to fix things with resources rather than trying to fix things through understanding. Understanding how well-being is created and how we're connected to one another and how another person's happiness is so deeply tied to our own. Change happens with people. The more people that are empowered through connection technologies, the more ability we have to collapse geographic distances so that an inequity happening across the globe is not perceived as so remote. The cost of innovation, the cost of learning, the cost of participation has gotten so cheap that those people who are being sidelined by those in power now have the capability to self-organize and, and, and become active participants in society. When you work in the as a grassroots level, working with all kinds of people and the ground, that power of people will never be much with anything else. Once you give somebody an idea, they can't not have the idea. Like a man who lights his light from my taper, doesn't diminish the fire that I have. As we become more interconnected, as great ideas swirl faster and faster around the planet, we will become more conscious and our sense of basic dignity will kick in. The power of connection may reveal what we're capable of and what is possible. The problems of this world are so big and they're so urgent that they demand disruptive thinking, audacious thinking. I think we still have to fight like hell um, to try to have this happen. We must work together. We must, if we want to have a better world. We need to redefine that sense of what growth is. I believe there is wisdom in all of us. I believe there is empathy in all of us. We just need to tap into them. There's not time for us to think in incremental terms. We need to agitate. We need to inspire others. The people who write the songs and the culture of the day are gonna change society more than those who are in charge of policy and the law. We should be allowed to be creative, and that will mean not quite getting it right again in the future. So in that way, I think that the future will be a lot better. Will it be better than what I have now? Wish I could be around to see that. Uh, but I actually think it will be. I do.